Number 26. If the 0.1 millimeter diameter tungsten filament in a light bulb is to have a resistance of 0.2 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius, how long should it be? All right. So um, first things first, right? Let's write down some of the things that we know. So they're telling us the diameter of the tungsten filament. Now, we know that in terms of, and by the way, check out number 24. I went through a detailed um, review of this particular topic of resistance and its, and its relationship basically to resistivity, length, and area, cross-sectional area, that is. So we know by now that um, if they're giving us a diameter, we're probably going to have to convert that to a cross-sectional area. So if we look at the figure here, the radius is all important because we know that the area of this particular cross-section, it's circular, by the way, is going to be pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. And we know then that the radius is going to be half of the diameter. So they gave us the diameter, 0.1. So 0.1, we have to divide that by 2. That would give us then the radius. However, it gives us the radius then in millimeters. We don't want that. We want it in terms of meters. So just multiply that by 10 to the minus 3. Okay? You can, of course, do the conversions out with dimensional analysis. But, you know, at this stage in the game, we're kind of going through them quickly now. Hopefully we've been doing enough practice uh, where this makes sense. So 0.1 divided by 2, uh, multiplied then by 10 raised to the minus 3, and we're going to square that. And by the way, I already plugged in the pi. So we get the uh, an area here of about 7.85 times 10 to the minus 9th, and that will be in terms of squared meters. All right, so that is the area, cross-sectional area. Now, they want to know how long this wire has to be. So they want to know the length, L. So L is the question mark, okay? And they also tell us that it's tungsten. Now, they tell us the resistance of that tungsten, R, is going to be 0.2 ohms. Okay, great. We also know, again, the nature of the material. We have to look up the resistivity. So tungsten down here is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. Now, that is the resistivity at 20 degrees Celsius. All right, all these values from this table, I know it doesn't say it up here, but they are at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the resistivity of the material changes with changing temperature. All right, these values here are all at 20 degrees Celsius. If your temperature is not 20 degrees Celsius, we're going to have to calculate the new resistivity. Okay, how would we do that? I'm sure we'll deal with the problem in the future. So um, uh, the resistivity here for tungsten is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8, and that's ohm meter. And by the way, the answer to the quick question would be to use the formula over here on the right-hand side. We need to know another constant alpha, but that's the quick answer. Now, we got everything we need, so let's just plug it on into the formula. The resistance of flow, of current basically flowing through a wire, will be equal to the resistivity of the wire, which is dependent upon the nature of the material, the type of material you're talking about, and basically the temperature, multiplied then by the length of that material, divided by then the cross-sectional area of that wire. So we're after length, right? So just solve this for L, right? Cross-multiply the A on up, cross-multiply the resistivity on down, and here's your little formula now. Look at how simple that is, right? Here it is. Area times resistance divided by resistivity. That's it. So let's just plug it all in. So this is 7.85 times 10 to the minus 9th, multiplied by the resistance, which was 0.2 ohms. That's good. Divided then by the uh, resistivity, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. And that will equal the length. And what do we get? Let's plug it in. I'm going to use the exact value of the um, cross-sectional area found, just so you know. Point, no, so multiply that by 0.2, then divide that by 5.6 times 10 to the minus 8. <clears throat> and what do we get? So we get a length here of about 0 0.028. And that'll be in terms of meters. If you need it in centimeters or millimeters or, you know, nanometers, picometers, whatever, kilometers, 
You can obviously do the conversion, all right? But this is definitely an answer. Um, how many sig figs? I would assume there should be two. Why? Well, because look at the value for tungsten. It had two sig figs, right? There's all multiplied together. I know the values they gave us up at the top are three, but we're using a value there that has two, so we really should be controlled by that. But, um, you know, if the answer is somewhat different, uh, who cares? Nobody cares about sig figs, um, except for sometimes your professor, who will take off 30 points on your exam if you don't round to the right number of sig figs. Uh, true story, by the way. True story. So, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with the next problem. Take care.